Although why is creating an onboarding process so complicated? Does this happen to you? Well, fret not, I got a solution for you. Introducing Flow Builder, a package that simplifies your screen flows. So to get started, you can go to the link in the description and fork this onboarding Flow Builder project. So once you have the project or the grocery app project, let's get started. So Flow Builder help us to get the different data from each page that we have to push on top of our page stack. You could see that the Flow Builder is like a store. So once we reached to the end of the page flow, we want to pop all of the page except for the first one, like our home page, and use the data that we gathered to be shown in the home page. So this solves the issue of having some complicated solution to get the data transferred to the first page in our page stack. If you were to see the grocery app over here inside our add grocery.dart file, that was the same problem that we have on getting the data using the pop until method from our navigator object. So now with flow builder, we can make use of the Flow Builder widget. But first, we need a parent widget. Let's create a stateless widget which is called Grocery Flow. And inside this, instead of a container, we can type in the Flow Builder. Inside your pub spec YAML file, you can see that the Flow Builder has been added inside for us. So make sure you get the latest version of Flow Builder in the future. So back to our add grocery.dart file under our grocery flow widget, it requires two parameter. So the two parameters that the flow builder requires is this state and this on generate pages. So the state is the data that we are updating. And then for the on generate pages, it is a function that requires two arguments, which is the data and the pages. So let's add this inside our grocery flow and let's type in the word state. So we are going to make use of the grocery object which is inside our main.dart file. So if you were to click on the main.dart and if you were to scroll all the way down, you can see there is a grocery class that we have and it has three fields, the name, amount and price. And then at the same time, it also has a copy with method. So this is a simple method that allows us to update this grocery object that we are adding inside our flow builder. So inside our state over here, we will put an instance of the grocery object and the parameter that is required, if you guys can see over here, is on generate pages. So we're going to type in the on generate pages. And if you were to hover over these on generate pages, it requires two things. So the first one is the object that we have passed inside our state parameter and then the list of page dynamics. So we are expecting or returning a list of pages as well. So what we can do is we can create a on generate pages function. So right outside our grocery flow, let's type in the word fun for function. And then let's copy this on generate pages word and paste it over here. The next thing is let's remove this args or argument. And because this on generate pages requires this list of page return type. So let's copy this and then highlight this void and paste this as such. So now we are left with two arguments. So the first argument is the grocery object. And the second argument is the list of page, which also is a dynamic. So we can copy the types over here and then paste this as such. Now the thing is for this grocery, we need a name. So we're going to type in the word grocery. And then for this list page, we can remove this list page dynamic. And then we can always type in the name of the argument, which is pages. So now if you were to highlight and copy this on generate pages and paste it over here, you could see that we already have passed it in successfully. So there is a warning that says we need to add in a return statement. So let's type in the word return. So what kind of pages are we returning? 
So inside our on generate data pages, we will probably return a list of material page. So let's add in the material page for the first page. To know what's the first page, we can always press this plus button at the bottom. And then you can see that our first page is this name page. So if you were to scroll a little bit down, you can see there is the grocery name form. So what we can do is we can put in the grocery name form inside this list and then copy this grocery name form. And then let's press enter and then type in the material page. So it's not material page route, it's a material page. And then this material page requires a child and then make sure you copy this grocery name form and paste it over here and make sure that you put in the instance rather than the type. So now we can duplicate this. So what you can do is you can put a cursor over here and press alternate shift down two times and this will duplicate the line on top. So other than having the grocery name form, we have other forms such as grocery amount form and also grocery price form. So if you were to type in the word ASD or anything, you press continue, there is the amount form and then we will type in a number and then we have the price form as well, type in another number. With this whole flow, we should add a grocery inside it but now we are going to refactor it with the flow builder. And now we're going to change the second material page into the grocery amount form. And lastly, the last form will be the price. And now if you were to save this, nothing really happens. So since we have created a grocery flow widget, we can pass it inside our main.dart. But we're going to do a little bit of refactoring and easier way for us to pass in the grocery flow. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another function. So type in fun. And then this function will be the route where it returns the route of this grocery flow. So we don't have any arguments for this. And then for the type, it is a static method and it returns us the route of the grocery object that we are returning. So we can type in the word grocery and then we will type in the word return and we're going to return a material page route. So for the material page route, we're going to add in the required builder parameters over here. So we're going to type in the word builder and then we're going to add in the function. So you have your context we're going to return the grocery flow. So you can do this inside your own widget so that it will just return the grocery flow widget. So let's copy this grocery flow, go inside our main.dart. So right underneath our floating action button, what we can do is we can highlight the material page route until you see the second last brackets and remove this as such. And then you can paste the grocery flow type and then you can add in the route static method. So the static method allows us to not instantiate or have these brackets. So it looks a little bit nicer and it's attached to the type grocery flow. And now if we will save in both files by pressing command alternate S, Let's see how it looks like. So you can see that there is an unimplemented handling of missing static target. So what we can do is we can restart the whole app and let's see if it works. So you can see that now it works, but the first page that we see is the price form. And then if we were to go back over here, it will go to the amount form. And then if we were to go back, it will go to the name form. And if we were to go back, it actually returns an empty page. So why is that so? So for the on generate pages over here, it actually returns the whole list of pages. So normally in a stack of pages or the navigator stack, the last element of the list of pages will be shown as what we have seen so far. So how then can we show the grocery name form first and then the amount form and then the grocery price form. So what we can do is we can make use of this grocery object inside our argument. So we normally will put 
an if statement to see whether the data dot a certain property is null. So then if it's null, we will not show the material page. So let's do that inside our onGeneratePages function. So we're going to type in if bracket grocery dot, which property are we using to compare whether it is null? So according to this flow, we want to compare the name because if the grocery name is null, then we won't show the grocery amount form. So we're going to type in grocery name and then if grocery name is not equal to null, then we will return the grocery amount form. So we can copy this if statement over here and then let's paste this as such. And then what is the property for our grocery price form to be rendered? So the form before the price form is the amount form. So that means we need the grocery amount to not be null. So if we were to save this, let's see if it works. Now you press on the add button. You can see that the grocery name form is rendered. That's correct. That's what we want. So the next thing is we want to make use of this state over here. So how do we then update while we, for example, so if you were to go to the grocery name form widget over here, you could see under our raised button widget, there is this on pressed. And if the name is empty, it returns null so that on press will not do anything. Otherwise, it will just push to the next one. So how are we going to make use of the new flow builder to push while updating our grocery object inside our flow builder over here? In order for us to do that, we're going to make use of the update data. It uses the context or the build context. And basically, it uses the extension feature to add the flow object or the flow controller inside the build context. So it's easier for us to access it. And we're going to make use of the update method. So the flow controller is basically the one that is controlling the data in between the different flow or the different screens or pages that we are in. So if we were to use the update method, then we will get the current object or the data and we can make use of the method that's being attached. So the method that we have is the copy with, which is the same as, you know, update. And then we can pass in the property that we want to update. So let's do that. So let's create a function inside our grocery name form. And this function, let's type in the word fun. And this function will be named handle flow. So the arguments is empty and we're going to have a void type. So if you were to type in the word context and then this context will show us the property that we need. So we're going to type the flow and then this refers to the flow controller. And for the flow, let's add in the type and it will be the grocery type. And we're going to make use of the update method. So for the update method over here, we will have the current grocery. And then we can make use of the grocery object over here. So type in grocery dot. And then there is the copy with method. So with the copy with method, we are going to access the property. Let's put in semicolon first. So let's put in the brackets over here. And then let's make it into block body. So with the copy with method, we can make use of the property that we have. So we're going to make use of the property name. So let's type in the word name and then we are going to pass in the updated name that we have inside our states over here. So with this handle flow, what we can do is if we were to scroll all the way down under our raised button on pressed over here, we are going to remove everything. So let's remove the anonymous function and we're going to make use the, of the ternary. So the property that we are passing or updating is the name. So let's use the name variable that's inside our grocery name form. And then let's type in if the name is not empty, then what we will do is pass in the handle flow method. Otherwise we will pass in a null. So apparently my handle flow is spelled wrongly. So let me fix the typo and now it's working. So if you were to save this, all right. So we're going to do the same throughout our different forms. So what we can do is we can, as per usual, copy and paste. So we can copy the handle flow and then let's go to the grocery amount form. 
and then paste it over here. So now with this, let's copy the word amount and paste it over here. And let's use the property amount as well. So you want to have an integer with an integer. And then we can scroll all the way up, copy this on pressed over here. And then let's scroll all the way down. Let's remove the whole on pressed parameter and paste the ternary operator with the on pressed parameter over here. Now, since we are listening to an integer or since we need the variable amount, which is an integer type, we can't know that it is not empty. So what we can do is to see whether the integer is equal to null. So underscore amount, if it's not equal to null, then we will handle the flow. Otherwise, we will just return the null. All right, so we are going to do the same with the last form, which is the grocery price form. So we can remove the on pressed and paste the one that we have done. And then we can just copy the handle flow inside our grocery amount form state and then paste it just below our integer price as well. So for this price, we are going to copy and then we can just highlight the word amount and type in the word price. So then if you were to scroll all the way down, we don't have a variable that is name amount. So we can put in the price variable. So the thing is that once we are done, because price form over here is the last form, should we still update or is there another method? So there is another method that is called the complete flow or the complete method basically. So what the complete method does is it just removes or pops all of the info while we update our data. So it's pretty simple. We can just swap the word update to the word complete. So this will just complete the current flow and pops all of the different pages that we have. So now if we will save this. So now if we were to go to main.dart, if you hover over the push, you could see that it is a future that returns a type. So the type comes from the root that you have added in. So the root that we have added in is the type of grocery. So actually we can create a variable after we have done with the grocery flow from our flow builder. So we're going to create a final variable and then this will be our grocery that we want to add. And now the thing is for this grocery variable, if you were to hover over it, it is a future grocery. So in order for us to make sure that it's not a future because we don't want that, we want a grocery object, we can make use of the keyword await. And once we have a new grocery, we can add it inside our grocery list that we have inside our homepage. So we can copy this grocery list variable and then let's add in a new line just below the grocery variable. And then we're going to add our grocery inside our grocery list. So we can type in the word add method and then we can just pass in the grocery. So since this is a stateful widget, we probably have to do some set state. So what we can do is we can type in the word set state. Then we can add the grocery list add method inside our set state method. So now we can restart this whole thing and see if it works. So inside our groceries app, we're going to add maybe a banana and then we can continue. And imagine if we were to put ASDF, you could see that inside our amount form, it does not allow us to continue. So this is due to the try parse method. So what a try parse method does is that if the string that you want to parse is not a number string, then it will just return null. This amount will be a null. And if the amount is null, then it will pass in a null inside our on press parameter. So for our amount, let's add in the amount of not 42, but 12. And for the price, we can add in the price 12. All right, so we have successfully added a flow builder inside our groceries app. So there are other use cases that you can use. For example, onboarding, where you need the different data of the user or at the same time, you can make use of authentication. So you want to have the user password, email and whatnot. That's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this video, subscribe down below and comment down if you like this flow builder.
So that's it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.